All right, now I want to talk about complex eigenvalues. What happens when you get a complex eigenvalue as you're solving one of these differential equations? So here's your example, and as you know, you can rewrite the system of differential equations. And you also know that you want to start by finding the determinant of a minus lambda i. And you set that determinant equal to zero. And you can go ahead and use the quadratic formula to solve for lambda. Um, for some reason, I kind of prefer to use uh, completing the square. Um, and whether you use completing the square or um, the quadratic formula, you're going to eventually get that your two eigenvalues are 5 plus 3i and 5 minus 3i. And what we want to do is we want to take one of those eigenvalues, let's just say 5 plus 3i, and we want to see what you get when you plug that into a minus lambda i times the eigenvector equals the zero vector. So if you plug in lambda equals 5 plus 3i, your equation becomes this right here. And I'm going to simplify a bit. Your a minus lambda i times x equals the zero vector turns out to look something like this right here. Now hopefully I know what you're thinking. Hopefully what you're thinking is well, these two equations are supposed to turn out to be the exact same thing, and they sure don't look like the exact same thing. Well, actually, as it turns out, they are. And you can verify this by multiplying the bottom equation by the conjugate of 1 minus 3i, which is 1 plus 3i. If you do that, you're going to get that equation right there, which looks kind of like this. Here I distributed the negative through the parentheses, and here I, uh, I guess I foiled out those two conjugates. Whenever you foil out conjugates, your middle terms will cancel. And if you remember that i squared is equal to negative 1, you get this. Now take a look at that equation. All we did was multiply both sides of the equation by a constant, which is totally allowed. And compare that equation to the first equation here. It looks like what we got here in blue is just two times this original equation right here. So as it turns out, these two equations don't look the same, but they actually are the same. Okay, and it's good to be able to check that, because checking to see if your two equations are the same is a good way to tell if you've done the problem correctly so far. So I'm going to erase all this blue stuff, and I'm going to go ahead and solve one of these equations for one of these variables. I'm going to say a is equal to 1 minus 3i times b over 2. And since we determined that these two equations are the same, we can choose b to be whatever we want. I'm going to say that we should choose b equals 2, and that's going to give us a equals 1 minus 3i. And that's going to give us an eigenvector of 1 minus 3i and 2. Now let's do the same process for our other eigenvalue, which was uh, 5 minus 3i. And if we go through that whole process, we could uh, verify that these two equations are exactly the same, and they are. If we stay consistent with what we did before, we can choose b to be 2. And that's going to give us a is 1 plus 3i, which gives us a second eigenvector of 1 plus 3i, 2. Now I just want to notice really quick what just happened there. We found an eigenvector for 5 plus 3i, and we got it to be 1 minus 3i, 2. And we found an eigenvector for 5 minus 3i, and we got it to be 1 plus 3i, 2. So our conjugate eigenvalues gave us conjugate eigenvectors. And that's something that is actually always going to happen. So what's cool here is once we find one of our eigenvectors, we automatically know what the second one is going to be. It's going to be the complex conjugate. All right, let's go ahead and write down a general solution. OK, so there it is right there. There is the general solution to that system of differential equations. Now, while that is a general solution to this differential equation, it's pretty terrible looking. And it would be really nice if we could write this out in a way that gets rid of all of our imaginary numbers. So what I'd like to do is I would like to take this little piece right here, and I'd like to rewrite this. And just like we did for the case when we had complex roots for our second order linear homogeneous differential equations, we're going to rewrite this using this Euler identity here. So I'm just going to make a quick note, if e to the i theta is this right here, then e to the 3i t can be written like this right here, just because we can replace theta with 3t. Uh, the first step that I did here is I just used a little bit of pretty basic algebra. Now I'm just going to replace e to the 3i t with this right here. Okay, I just wanted to consolidate everything because I'm hoping to get all of this on one single page so you can see all the work at once. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the cosine plus i sine into this vector right here. For the second element in this vector, that's really easy. We just multiply 2 by this whole thing. 
For the first element, I'm actually going to have to foil everything out. Now I consolidated just a little bit more. Remember that I squared is equal to negative 1, so I'm just going to change this into a plus 3 sine 3t. Three and what I'd like to do is group all the real terms together and group all the imaginary terms together. And okay, I guess I'm going to need one more line here. We can break apart the real components and the imaginary components into two different vectors here. Okay, I know this is looking pretty ugly, but let's uh, keep going here. What I'm going to do, and you're not going to have to do this on your own every single time, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing to this term right here. Okay, so I just went through all of that algebra so that you don't have to ever again. Um, because we got the same vectors in the first term as we did in the second term. So we know that if we wanted to, we could group all of this together into some constant times this big vector plus some other constant times this big vector. So what have we actually done? What we did is we took our general solution right here and we rewrote it into a constant times an eigenvector plus a constant times an eigenvector. I would just write our general solution as, as this right here. So let's go through this problem and I'll tell you what you need to do and what you don't need to do as far as all of the algebra that I wrote down here. So what you do need to do is you need to find your two eigenvalues. You need to plug one of those eigenvalues back into this equation right here to find this eigenvector. You automatically know what that second eigenvector is going to be so you don't have to go through this equation at all. And if you want to, you could write down this general solution right here. However, we know that we're not going to keep it in this form. We're actually going to rewrite this thing. So all you have to do to rewrite this is you have to go through just the steps that I didn't erase. You want to rewrite one of your two linearly independent solutions using Euler's identity. And if you do that, you're going to break up your real pieces into your and your imaginary pieces into two different eigenvectors. Now you know that if you did the same process on this side of the equation right here, you're going to get the same two eigenvectors here and here. So you don't actually have to do all of that because you know that your general solution is just going to look like a constant times your first eigenvector that you got right here plus another constant times your second eigenvector that you got right here. And that gives you a real valued general solution to a system of differential equations if you end up getting complex eigenvalues. Now one more time, and this time I've erased everything that you don't actually need to write out. You're going to find your eigenvalues and if they're complex, you're going to go through and you're going to find one of your eigenvectors right there. And then you're going to take that linearly independent solution with that associated eigenvector and eigenvalue, and you're going to rewrite it using Euler's identity. When you rewrite it using Euler's identity, you're going to come up with these two vectors right here, and those are your new real eigenvector. So you can just take those and plug those in to your general solution and you're finished. Seems simple, right? <laughs> um, okay, well give it a shot, see how it goes. Um, the numbers should turn out to be a little bit nicer in this example. Uh, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors should turn out to be pretty simple without a whole lot of constants floating around. So give that a shot. Uh, sorry that took so long and uh, I'll see you all in class.